So the HSO4 minus is going to take the H? Yeah, and we could totally show it happening that way. However, what's the next step going to be? Next step, if you go uh, back to the bottom of page one, is that let, let's, uh, the carbonyl oxygen is going to protonate. That is, after this oxygen loses a proton, this oxygen is going to gain a proton. So that, can, that one can just steal it from the H? That's right. No. That's right. Now, it probably would be more realistic to show the sulfate taking this proton and then to show the, the new sulfuric acid giving the proton to this oxygen. That's probably more realistic. However, that's not how anyone actually ever draws it because it, it's a pain and it doesn't give you any new insight. So what everyone does in real life is they pretend that this oxygen is stealing the proton directly. And that saves us some time and already complicated reactions. So we might as well just do that together. So instead of, doing, instead of showing the sulfate taking the proton from the right-hand oxygen and then giving the proton to the left-hand oxygen, we're just going to show the left-hand oxygen taking the proton from the right-hand oxygen. That's, that's the conventional way to draw this. That's what's called a proton transfer. Okay, and that's like you can show it like just doing the H or something? Good. Did you put in your arrows? Yeah, it should. The arrows can leave. Those are good electron pushing arrows. Good. So, the way to show that proton transfer. Now the positive charge is over here on the original carbonyl oxygen. And so now this is where we learned during class that like the water is going to want to go off right. and then it's going to make a new carbonyl, like with the double bond? Ah, that's possible. Okay, yeah. So, so our next step is, um, what, what was, so now this can leave because anything with a positive charge is a good leaving group. All right, so now this can leave. Now, um, there's a couple of different ways that we can draw this now. The best way is to draw it like this. Yeah, the best way to draw this next step is like this. And here's the carbonyl oxygen that's left over here. Now, there is an alternative way that we could have uh, drawn this that I think is what you were mentioning. Is this what you were thinking? You could show this lone pair kicking this off. That's perfectly legitimate. That doesn't really give us a carbonyl, but it looks like it gives something that looks kind of like a carbonyl. Okay, now both of these are correct, and this is going to be something that is uh, frustrating to students in the second term. In the second term, there will be many alternative correct ways to draw mechanisms. Oftentimes, there's more than one correct way, and that makes students very nervous because they can't tell if their answer is different than the answer key, whether they're getting it right or not. So we have to learn when, 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 what are the differences that don't matter. Well, why, why are these considered the same? Why are these considered? You got it? All right, that's right. And why, are they, why is it considered that they only differ by resonance? Well, the only difference between them is where we put this pair of electrons. In this case up here, we left the pair of electrons on this oxygen. Whereas in this case, we put that pair of electrons in this pi bond. But the only difference between that is where we moved those pi electrons inside the atom. But the movement of pi electrons inside an atom, just like you said, is resonance, which means that you can draw it either way, and they're both totally equivalent to each other. The only difference between these two pictures is where we put the lone pair, the, the pair of pi electrons on this oxygen. Um, but whether you, where you put the pair of pi electrons is just a matter of resonance. And um, these, are basically, these are basically resonance structures of each other. These two pictures here are resonance structures, which means they're both correct. These two pictures are resonance structures, which means they're both correct, which means that you can draw it whichever way you like. Um, 
But which one is best for a beginning student? Well, this way is much better for a beginning student because it's simpler. This is better for a beginning student because it's simpler, and also because it tells us what's going to happen next. What's going to happen next here is that a nucleophile is going to attack this carbon. But that's much less obvious in this picture than it is up here. And also, if you drew it like this, you would have to kick the pi bond all up, up again. You'd just be reversing what you just did. So it just adds extra arrows without adding ex any extra insight, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Now, unfortunately, professors usually prefer to draw this path. And the reason is they like to show how this carbocation is being stabilized by resonance. They like to show this is being stabilized by resonance from the lone pair. Um, but the extra confusion from that isn't really worth the, any benefit that, that a student would get uh, from that. So uh, unfortunately, I think that the way that instructors oftentimes draw these, they often, draw, um, they often like to draw the extra resonance form to show the resonance stabilization when it doesn't really help you to predict the reaction, what's really important. I think the best thing to do is to draw it this way and to say in the back of your mind, oh, I remember that this is stabilized by resonance. But there's no percentage from actually drawing that resonance form because this reaction is going to be complicated enough the way it is. All right. Now, there's going to be a lot of cases like that throughout the whole rest of the term. There'll be many cases where there's two different ways to draw a mechanism because there's um, a bunch of different places you can put the pi electrons inside the atom. But again, it doesn't really matter where you put the pi electrons inside a single molecule. Those are just resonance differences. All right, so I think we're going to try to stick with this approach because this is complicated enough already. All right, so. Uh, that gave us uh, this. By the way, what was the purpose of this proton transfer over here? So One purpose was to get rid of this positive charge. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What was the other so purpose? So the water can leave? Yeah, to make it a better leaving group. We know that neutral oxygens are not good leaving groups. Um, but now this is a great leaving group. So now it can leave and leave the positive charge, especially because the carbocation is resonance stabilized, as we were just talking about. All right, so um, that was that step. So we just finished here um, the carbonyl oxygen protonating, and the carbonyl oxygen is left as water. And now the second nucleophilic atom is going to attack the carbonyl carbon. Well, where is that second nucleophilic atom coming from? The original one? I don't know. <laughs> now, it's going to come from another alcohol molecule. Remember that even though I only drew one alcohol molecule, it's not like there's only one molecule in the, in the beaker. There's billions of these. Um, so it's not, So we should, we should have plenty of them left. I suppose it would probably would have been better, though, if I had said that we're putting in two equivalents. Uh, although sometimes I think even textbooks are sloppy and they don't say that there's two equivalents. But it would be best to say that we have two equivalents. But generally speaking, uh, even if they don't say that, you're usually supposed to assume that we have enough equivalents for the alcohols to attack twice. So now we have to draw in a whole new alcohol molecule. another deprotonation. And yeah, the best person to use for the deprotonation is this sulfate. This sulfate over here would be the best to use for this deprotonation. So like I said, that, um, that's a pretty complicated reaction just in the sense that there's a lot of steps, at least if you include all the protonations and deprotonations. And people just very often get halfway through and then they get confused. They don't know what to do next. Uh, well, that's the purpose of the handout. If you're not sure where you're at, you can kind of see where, what have I done so far in the handout and then what's the next step. I think it's important to have all those steps uh, in one place. And I saw that you're still putting in the asterisk, so that's good. So we can see that this is what used to be the carbonyl carbon, even though it doesn't look like a carbonyl carbon anymore. 
All right, so we need to stop and talk about this because this is a really crucial reaction. 